man, what a friend we have in Jesus. I'm so glad that you are here tonight. I'm glad that you uh, have come to crew. I hope you've had a great week. I'm excited to kind of jump into week two of friendships. And so uh, I'm really, tonight we're going to center our, our, the message around what I would call gospel friends. What is gospel friendship? What does it look like? How do you be a gospel friend and how do you make and have gospel friends and what does it even mean uh, for that whole thing? And so that's what we're going to kind of center tonight's message around. And I want to tell you this, I I think that there's a a marked difference between a friend and a gospel friend. I think that they're different things. And so uh, I, I'm, my, my hope and my prayer for you is that uh, if you don't already, that you have some gospel friends in your life. And we're going to dig into that and just kind of break this down into basically four main points. And we're going to center tonight's message uh, in Romans chapter 12. And so we're going to be in Romans chapter 12 starting in verse 9. And we're going to talk, uh, talk through some of that. But let me just um, let me give a little uh, preview, a little pre- uh, preface here. A gospel friend, I would tell you, is this. A gospel friend is someone who makes you a better version of yourself, but shaped in Christ-likeness. That's a gospel friend. A gospel friend is a person who makes you a better version of yourself, but not just of yourself, because you're not just trying to be the best you. You're trying to be the best you in the likeness of Christ. I will tell you that a gospel friend is a friend of substance, and what does that even mean? Well, to start off, well, what does it mean? What does the word gospel even mean? The gospel, the, the word literally means good news. And so, man, if we are gospel friends, what that means is that we are, are friends that are filled with the good news of Jesus. I want you to know this, and this is what we firmly believe here in Crew, is that you, uh, if you are a Christian, and you are rooted in, in the, the, the belief that Jesus was, was, a, was a human born here on earth as a baby, uh, lived his life, had his ministry, was crucified, dead and buried and raised. That, that The truth of knowing that we have a resurrected Savior changes every single thing that we do. Right? It changes. That belief and our hope in Jesus changes how we live life. And so, hey, if we are going to have gospel friendships, the, the gospel is going to change how we do things. Everything including friendship. And so we got we to live into that. We are informed by the gospel in how we friend. So let's start in Romans chapter 12, verse 9. I'm reading from the New King James Version. You can read from your version, but let's, let's start here. It's going to be on the screens. Verse 9, it says this. Let love be without hypocrisy. Abhor what is evil. Cling to what is good. Be kindly affectionate to one another with brotherly love. In honor, giving preference to one another, not lacking in diligence, fervent in spirit, serving the Lord. Verse 12, where we're going to pause. Rejoicing in hope, patient in tribulation, continuing steadfastly in prayer. Okay, verse 9 starts with, let love be without hypocrisy. Hey, I want you to know that, hey, I think that you should have some love in your gospel friendship. There should be an element of brotherly, sisterly, uh, godly love in your friendship. And that love has to be without hypocrisy, which means it needs to be true. It needs to be trustworthy. And so I'm going to start by saying, hey, gospel friendships that last, point number one, gospel friendships that last have trust. Have trust. One of the greatest gifts that you can give to somebody is your trust. It is a huge deal when someone shares something and is transparent with you. You need friends that you can trust, who you can both share with the truth uh, about yourself and who can also share the truth about themselves with you. Gospel friends and that the friendship that lasts is centered on truth. It is, it, we have got to have trust in truth. Trust in truth. You know, and Here's, here's, here's the truth. I want to tell you this right now. I don't think it's very wise for you to just to pick any old friend that you have and go to them and start sharing your burdens, your hurts, your pains, your sin. I just don't think it's very wise. Uh, I, I don't think it's very wise. I also don't think it's just going to be very beneficial for you if you share all of those things with them and they're not Christ-centered. I just don't think there's a whole lot of benefit there. And Why would I say that? 
Why, why would I say, man, I just don't think there's a lot of benefit there? Well, the first thing is this. Um, when you share your sin and your hardship with someone who is Christ-centered, they will always point you back to Jesus. When you share your sin, your hurt, your pain, your trauma with your, with your friends who are gospel-centered, they're going to point you back to Jesus. When they're not gospel-centered, they'll probably point you to everything but Jesus. Right? They'll, they'll, they'll point you to all these other things. Romans 12, 16 says this, be of the same mind toward one another. Do not set your mind on high things, but associate with the humble. Do not be wise in your own opinions. Did you catch that last part? Do not be wise in your own opinions. See, I will tell you this, if you have just a regular old friend that you go out to and you're hurting and you start sharing your, sharing your life story with your, your hurts and your pains, they're going to be giving you their own opinions. They're going to they're gonna share what they think is wise. But the truth is, man, the gospel, Jesus tells us, Paul writes here in Romans, hey, do not be wise in your own opinion. Anybody here have any or, or had any friends who they love to be in the kind of friend gossip No, Anybody have friends like that? Who just love to know what's happening. They, they run to the gossip. They want to know what's going on. They want to know the tea, right? They, they, they're always interested in what's happening, right? They, they want to be in the mix. Man, when I was a youth pastor, I had lots of people that were like that. Lots. Of, anybody just had been, been a victim of gossip? Just raise your hand if you've been a victim of gossip before. Not true, just gossip. Yeah. It's, it's a big deal. Man, I, I, there, was, there was definitely people that I've known in my life who I knew those were the people that they, they wanted people to come to them for advice. They sought out, and they wanted to be in the know about every little thing, and they wanted people to seek them out. They wanted people to, to, to come to them with their hurts and their whatever, and they, would, they, wanted, to, they wanted to be the one to give advice, right? Right? Um, they wanted to be the one, like if there was somebody that was praying, they wanted to be the first one up there to pray with them. Not because they wanted to pray with them. They wanted to know what they were praying about. Right? Come on. That, that, you know what I'm talking about, right? They, they didn't really care about what they were praying about. Like, whatever. They just want to know what's going on. Right? They want to be in the know. Right? And so they would go up there and they want to seek, uh, they want to seek that attention. And I'll, I'll tell you this. If you share your hurts with people like that, the truth is that they're, not, they're often not in it for you. They're actually in it for themselves. And they're just using you to fulfill some of their own needs in their heart and their own mind. Verse 16 starts out by saying, being of the same mind toward one another. If your friends are not always pointing you, to, pointing you back to Jesus, then in my opinion, they are, they're like some sort of pseudo-therapist for you. Often pointing you to trust your heart or trust your feelings or to, for you to do whatever you think is best not pointing you to the one who is the way, who is the truth, who is the only person that can give you eternal life. Gospel friends point you to the right way, the right set of truths that are put in God's word, pointing you to God who is the standard maker, who is the only one who you can live a life that is full of fulfillment. When you do not live a life with gospel friends, you are going to bring your hurts and pains to them and they're going to point you to what they think is wise and they're going to give you their, your, their own opinions about how you should live life and they're not going to point you to the one who actually can solve those problems, who can heal that heart, who can make a change. Last year, I had one of my students in my youth group um, commit suicide. Uh, if you were here last year, you probably were around when that happened. Uh, my, my, my friend Griffin uh, committed suicide uh, back, in, back in Illinois. I tell you that this week is his one-year anniversary from his tragic death. I want to tell you this. It was horrendous. It was horrible. His funeral was one of the worst things that I've been a part of. But I will tell you, it has been absolutely critical for his parents to have gospel friends that point them to Jesus. Because I don't know how you make it through something like that without Jesus. I don't know how you come out the backside of that with any semblance of, of like stableness or, or, or peace or, or anything without Jesus. And I'm telling you that my dear friends, his parents, they needed people in their life, gospel friends who would come around them and point them to Jesus. And that's not saying Jesus will make this all better. 
We're not liars, okay? We can be gospel friends and not liars, right? So uh, they, it wasn't, we, wouldn't, we didn't go to Jessica and Jared and say, hey, life's, like, you know, there's a reason for all this. No. We didn't say, hey, God's going to make all this better one day. No. What we are going to say is, hey, we love you, and Jesus loves you. And we're going to point you to the way, truth, and life. And I just want you to know, hey, you're going to go through some hard times in your life. You're going to go through some trials and, and tribulations in your life. And you've got to have gospel friends who are going to point you to Jesus and not point you to yourself. Not point you towards alcohol. Not point you towards weed. Not point you towards porn. Not point you towards something else. But to point you towards Jesus. And so you've got to have gospel friends who will do that. Now, trust is not just something that you give to anyone. Let me uh, read you a verse from Matthew chapter 7, verse 6. This is an NLT. It's on the screen. It says this. It says, do not waste what is holy on people who are unholy. Don't throw your pearls to pigs. They will trample the pearls, then turn and attack you. What a weird verse for Pastor Josh to be talking about in the middle of a friendship series. What are you talking about, bro? Let me tell you. First of all, do you know, do you know how pearls are formed? Pearls are formed in an oyster. What happens with an oyster is that uh, the oyster uh, feeds by opening its mouth and filtering water, and it gets uh, food and nutrients from the water it filters. But every once in a while, a, a, a piece of sand will get into the mouth of an oyster, and if the oyster cannot get that piece of sand out, it becomes a pain for him, a hurt. It hurts the oyster. It pains them. It becomes an irritant for them. And so what the oyster does is the oyster starts to coat that pain. Coat it and coat it and coat it and coat it. And it looks something like this. We got, I think we got a picture of like a, a pearl that's cut in half. Well, so what happens in the center of every single pearl, like if it's a real pearl, not a plastic one that you got from Walmart. If it's a real pearl, at the center of every pearl, there is a piece of sand or an irritant. It's a, it's a pain. It's a hurt. And it coats it, and it coats it, and it coats it, and it coats it. Back to Matthew. Don't throw your pearls to pigs. Can I just tell you what I believe about Jesus? I don't believe Jesus mixes his words. I don't think Jesus kind of makes his stuff up on the fly. I don't think Jesus is like, you know what? I think I'm going to tell a parable today. I'm just going to wing it. I think every word in the Gospels, especially the words spoken by Jesus. Man, Jesus did not mince words. He knew exactly what he was saying and why he was saying it. Here's the truth. Don't waste what is holy on people who are unholy. Don't throw your pearls to pigs. Let me tell you this. For the oyster, the pearl is a hurt. It's a pain. Hey, when you guys have pearls in your life, when you have pain in your life, you know what you do? You coat them. You coat the hurt. You coat the hurt with different things. You numb the pain. You avoid the pain. You sleep off the pain. You do whatever you can to avoid it. But let me tell you, those things are precious. Your hurts, man, you got to be careful who you share your hurts with. Right? Gospel friendships at last have trust. You got to have trust in the person that you're going to share your hurt with because here's why. If you give what is really precious, what is really valuable, if you give your hurt and your pain and your trauma and your abuse or whatever has happened to your life, if you give it to an untrustworthy person, it says here, they will trample the pearls, then turn and attack you. I don't know. I, I pray this hasn't happened to you. But I've lived long enough. I've lived a really long time, 31 years. But I've lived long enough to know that there have been people that have shared their hurts with the wrong people and they've used those against them. They've used those vulnerable hurts and turned against their friends and used it against them. Right? I've had girls who have confided in one another. They said, man, I, I slept with my boyfriend. I really regret it. I, I, feel, I feel terrible. I shouldn't have done this. It's, it's terrible. Later on, they're telling somebody else. They didn't keep it. They, they didn't keep it between their friends. They, they shared it with somebody. Now, now, now there's a rumor going around. Now there's gossip going around. And now this person knows. And hey, they took, they took that girl's pearl and they spread it. Or they, they came back. 
and they, they, knew, they know somebody's vulnerable, and when they get in a heated moment, when they're having a fight, when they're, not, when they're, when they're angry at each other, oh, well, you're just a slut. They use these hurts to hurt. I tell you this because you have got to be so careful with who you share your pain with. You've got to be really careful who you share your hurts with, your pearls with. Number two, gospel friendships that last sharpen each other. Gospel friendships that last sharpen each other. Romans 12, 11. Not lacking diligent, fervent in spirit, serving the Lord. Let me tell you, we live in a, we live in a society of toxic positivity. You can be whatever you want to be, the world says. Your friends probably have told you you can be whatever you want to be. Maybe with the best of intentions, your parents have told you you can be whatever you want to be. Let me tell you today, right now, in this moment, I hope that you are not seeking to be whatever you want to be. I hope that you're seeking to be the person God's created you to be. And that is very different. Right? Because I want to be an astronaut. But I ain't, okay? I, I want to be a mathematician, but I can't hardly do two plus two. So I'm telling you, I don't want you just to be whoever you think you want to be. There are too many people that graduate college and are aimless. They don't know what they're going to do. They don't know what they're, because they, they never were trying to seek to live to be the person God's created them to be. They wanted to be the person they wanted to be. And oftentimes, that was based on a career. That was based on a dollar bill sign. That was not based on the will of God. And I'll tell you, man, what you need to do is not to seek to be whoever you can be or, or you know, some cutesy little f- cliche phrase. You've got to seek to be who God has created you to be. When you, uh, when you have a friend that will sharpen you, you've got to have people in your life that will do what is right. And they'll tell you when you're messing up. Uh, my friend, Greg, if I'm upset with you liking me, I'll never be the friend that I should be. Man, that's so true. Man, if I have a friend and I'm obsessed with them liking me, then I'm never going to be the actual friend I should be to them because all I want to do is make them happy. All I want to do is tell them um, the, the best things. I never will tell them the truth about their life. I'll never tell them what they, what, when they're messing up. And I'll never be the friend I should be because, man, I, 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 so I'm obsessed with them liking me. I know that we have some people pleasers in the room, right? Raise your hand. Right, just like AA class, right? Hi, I'm Josh Parker. I'm a people pleaser. Yep, you know, it's a real thing. It's a real thing. When you are in a gospel friendship, your friendship should be sharpening the other person, and that, that person should be sharpening you. I'm going to show you a picture of my buddy. I get to hang out with him this week for four days. Um, this is my friend. It's my best friend named Trevor. That's our picture. Um, I was light enough that he told me. And so um, uh, this is my boy, Trevor. Trevor and I were roommates all four years in college at Olivet. Uh, he's just, uh, boo, I know, sorry. It's all right. Uh, we, were all, we were college roommates for all four years at MNU, and, um, and, uh, and uh, so Trevor was my boy. Trevor, Trevor was, um, Trevor's maybe not always the friend you want, but he's the friend you need. Do you know what I mean by that? My wife's nodding her head like, Praise the Lord for Trevor. Yep, you know why? Because without Trevor, we wouldn't be married. And so um, Trevor is maybe not the friend you want, but always the friend you need. Here's why. Trevor was my roommate for four years old, freshman year all the way through. That was my ride or die. Like, ride or die. like if I was somewhere and I wasn't with her, I was with him. So Trevor was always with me. But Trevor, man, Trevor let me get away with nothing. Like if I started acting out of line, if I started wiling out, if I started being stupid, Trevor was always the one to be like, Josh, what are you doing? Stop it. Like, he would, like, literally, in front of our group of friends, be like, Josh, stop it. I'm like, yikes. Like, ouch. Like, dagger to the heart, bro. Trevor was a gospel friend who sharpened me all the time, every year. All, I mean, all the time. You know what? My, he, he, he was so good for me. My parents couldn't wait for me to go to back college because they, they knew Trevor was waiting for me. I'm not lying to you. Is that true? That's totally true. Yeah, my parents can't wait for you to get back to Trevor. What? Are you kidding me? Because my parents know I'm wild. And so they were like, we need you to have somebody who's not wild and who is trustworthy. And so, um, uh, man, Trevor was my guy. He called me to live a life that did not lack diligence, that was fervent in spirit and served the Lord. Trevor would convict me on stuff all the time. He'd convict me on 
lots of different things. I'll tell you one just really, like one story that just kind of like irked me to death, irks me to death today, but it was good for me. So when we were freshmen, we moved in, our parents, my, our moms coordinated our bedspread, so we matched in our room, it was so cute. And so, um, uh, but we, okay, when you got a roommate, do you like, is this still a thing? You like split up who's gonna buy what? Like somebody brings the mini fridge, somebody buys the futon, is that a thing? Yes, yes, no? One guy, just, one guy just buys everything, the other person just like lives there rent free? Heck no, all right, no, that's not how it works. Gospel friendship, you split the bill, all right, split the bill. It's every day, take somebody on a date, you don't do that. And so, um, anyways, <laughs> Trevor's, Trevor's job, Trevor's job was to bring the TV. Now, you know that's a big deal, right? Like, nobody want no 10-inch in your room, like, you know, got your little computer screen, like, you know, ain't nobody want you, like, watching football on your iPhone, like, that's whack, you know, you didn't want that, right? So, um, so, uh. It was Trevor's job to bring the TV. And so Trevor um, initially was awesome. Now, this is back in 2010, ancient days. And so um, at that point, he brought a 55-inch TV to our college dorm room, which was awesome. Okay. Now, quick survey. Has anybody here, does anybody, has anybody heard of the pastor named Francis Chan? Raise your hand if you've heard of Francis Chan. All right. Francis Chan has basically discipled me from afar. He doesn't know who I am, but he has discipled me. And so um, me and Trevor used to watch Francis Chan sermons all the time on YouTube. And one day, we watched this sermon about living um, a life of generosity and living a life um, where we live beneath our means so that we could give to others. At this same point, um, there was a major tornado in Joplin. Anybody remember that? Huge tornado that went through Joplin? And... We, I call them Dodds, um, Trevor Dodds, where Dodds decided that we needed to, to like take Francis Chan's message seriously, which I don't like taking sermons seriously. Like, I mean, I hate that. You know, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm the pastor. I'm just messing. Um, he wanted to take this sermon seriously. He was like, man, you know what? We need to like, I think God's like calling us to like live, like live beneath our means, like live, live differently. So we go home for a break. We go home for, I think it was Thanksgiving break, like a two-week break, so we go back to Colorado together. He lives, he's from Colorado, I'm from Colorado, that's how we became friends. So we drove home, and uh, we drove in separate cars, but Trevor brought his TV home. I didn't think anything about it. I'm like, cool, I brought his TV home, he's going to watch the game at home, cool. We come back from Thanksgiving break on that little two-week period between Thanksgiving and Christmas, and Dodds brings like a 15-inch TV back. Like this big. And he said, Josh, I sold my TV to my brother, and I'm going to use all that money to give to the people in Joplin, and we're going to go down and do like a little service project down in Joplin, and this is our new TV. <laughs> and I wanted to throat punch him right there. I was like, this is, this is the end of our gospel friendship, Josh, because you're going to die today. And so, um, <laughs> and so I will tell you, I was livid. Side note, he still has the TV. And I'm going to see him this weekend with all my other college, group, college, college buddies, and we're going to be there for four days. And he told me, he told us that we're going to watch the games and play Halo on his TV that he still has from college. And I'm like, bro, I'm not coming. And so um, <laughs> he sent us a picture in the group text of the TV that he bought. And I'm not kidding you, he gave all that money. I think he sold it for 500 bucks at the time. He, sold, he gave all of that money away. And then we went down to Joplin and worked on a whole weekend and cleaned up what was going on in the tornado. You know why? Because Dodds was a gospel friend who sharpened me, who did not lack diligence. He was fervent in spirit and he served the Lord and he called me to do the same thing. Proverbs 27, 17 says, iron sharpens iron and one person sharpens another. Hey, I just want you to know that. I want you to know this. You ready for me? In a world of compromise, you need friends who will not just call you uh, out of your sin, but will call you up and point you to Jesus. You are not your own. You were bought with a price. And in this world of compromise, you need gospel friends who are uncompromising, who won't let you slide, who won't let you slip, right? who won't let you backslide in your faith, who won't let you backslide in your walk, walk with Jesus, that they'll call you out and they'll call you up and say, hey, we don't live like that, we don't do those things, we're gonna sell our TV and give it to people that need it. 
And uh, when, you, when you have a gospel friend like that, it makes you sharper. Now, sometimes we want to pull back from that sharpening. Agreed? Sometimes we don't like people to call us out, right? Anybody love just having their friends call them out on their sin? I'm surprised. And so um, no one likes that. But here's the thing. When you pull back from that sharpening, when you don't allow your gospel friends to make you better, you're missing out. And you're causing them to miss out as well. You know that when it says iron sharpens iron and one person sharpens another, it's not saying that one piece of iron only sharpens the other piece. It says they're both being sharpened at the same time. So when you pull back, there's a deficit there. You're not growing, they're not growing. A gospel friend is there for your mutual benefit. And if you're not there, and if you don't allow it, it's, you're missing that mutual sharpening. Uh, number three, gospel friends are friends that are loyal. Romans 12, 15, rejoice with those who rejoice and weep with those who weep. I don't know about you, but I've had some friends who are there for me when things are great, but seem to be absent when I'm not at my best. When I'm not acting my best, when I'm not feeling my best, there's sometimes I have friends, I had some friends in my life who, who they were there when, when we're going to the lake house, but when we're not doing that and things are down and I'm not, things are not, life's not going great, then they're just kind of, they're kind of backed out. Gospel friends are your ride or dies. They stay with you. This is so critical. They rejoice with you when you rejoice, but they also weep with you when you weep. They don't run when things get tough. Loyalty is this. Can I tell you about this? This is the difference between a friend and a gospel friend. You ready? Friends are loyal to you. Gospel friends are loyal to Jesus in pointing you towards him. Right? Gospel friends, their loyalty doesn't lie with you. It lies with Jesus and then pointing you towards him. Because if their friendship's with you, when you start to compromise, they're going to be all like, okay, hands off. You do you, man, whatever you want. It's okay. You, you just do you. But if they're loyal to Jesus and they're loyal to pointing you towards Jesus, then when you start tripping, when you start messing up, then they're like, nah, uh Now, I love you enough. I'm loyal to you enough. I'm loyal to Jesus enough that we're going we're gonna to correct this. We're going to get this right. And I'm not saying that being a gospel friend is easy. You might be hearing this tonight and being like, man, this sounds awful. Like, I got to be like, I got to hold my friends accountable. I got to like tell them the truth about themselves. I got to have them tell the truth about me. I got to have them allow, I got to allow them to hold me accountable. Yes, that's what it means. Jesus didn't say, hey, you know, you know, get on your pony and follow me. He said, pick up your cross. Right? Being a disciple of Jesus is not something that's just like you know, rainbows and butterflies. It is something that is difficult. It's, it's, it's challenging. Sometimes we don't like this. When we are living in sin, we don't like other people to tell us the truth. And you know what I often find is that when we're living in sin, the one thing we really don't want to hear is we don't want to hear the gospel. When, 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 when you feel like you're backsliding, when you feel like, man, I just don't know how I'm doing with the Lord, man, the stuff that starts to drop it off is, is church, it's Bible reading, it's prayer, because we just feel like, man, I gotta pull back from Jesus. You know, he doesn't wanna be with me. We need friends to push us. Now, here's the other, other piece. Hey, if you are being a gospel friend to somebody and you're loyal to Jesus and you're pointing them towards you or towards him and they start to back off because they're like, I don't wanna hear this gospel stuff, I don't wanna hear this Jesus stuff, right? They don't wanna hear that Jesus answers. Can I just encourage you? Don't give up. Push forward. Press on. Don't, because, so, let me just tell you, they're not rejecting you. They're not rejecting you. They're rejecting Jesus, and that's okay, because you're going to continue to show them the true love of Jesus and not their idea of Jesus. Right, because the true love of Jesus continues to pursue even when people are running. The true love of Jesus doesn't, doesn't let people stand off at a distance. It comes near, Right? Jesus got down in people's lives, got down in their sin with them. And that's my encouragement to you. Christians make no room for offense. We allow Jesus to, to, to change us. And the last thing is this. Gospel friendships that last, forgive. Now next week we're going to talk extensively about what forgiveness looks like and what that, how that's lived out. But let me just tell you this. Um, at the end of Romans chapter 12, it says this. Repay no one evil for evil. 
Have regard for good things in the sight of all men. If it's possible, as much as it, as it depends on you, live peaceably with all men. Beloved, do not avenge yourselves, but rather give place to wrath, for it is written, vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord. Hey, I want you to know this. Friendship, gospel friendship, it don't matter. If you're just in a relationship of any kind, if you don't just live up in a, in a cave by yourself, there is going to be hurt in your friendships. You're going to hurt your friends' feelings, right? And, I, and your friends are going to hurt your feelings, right? It's just part of it. And sometimes it's going to be intentional. I know that sounds awful, but sometimes your friends are going to hurt your feelings intentionally, right? I used to call Dodds a NARP because he is, but I love him. And so uh, a NARP is a non-athletic regular person. But um, I'm just going to tell you, hey, your friends are going to hurt your feelings sometimes, and you're going to hurt their feelings sometimes. And a gospel, a gospel friendship is centered on, for, on forgiveness. We don't just say, hey, forget you, we're done, this is over, you're dead to me. We forgive. Now, that doesn't mean you have to be best friends again, but we don't harbor anger in our heart. We don't try to take vengeance, right? We don't repay evil for evil. We care for the other person. Gospel friends, forgive. It's hard, it's difficult, but we're called to it. I want to close with this. <clears throat> I want to ask you to think, I want to ask you one question, then I want you to think about this. Who in your life is challenging you and sharpening you right now? Who's a gospel friend in your life that's challenging you and sharpening you in this moment? Who's that person? And then I just want you to, to just be reminded of this truth. I'm so glad that we, that we ended worship with what a friend we have in Jesus. Because there, are, there may be times in your life where you just feel like, I don't know, I don't feel like I have a gospel friend. I don't feel like I have a friend that I can trust. You always have one friend that you can trust. Who's forever faithful, who's steadfast, whose yoke is easy and his burden is light. He is your friend. He is the ultimate friend. He is Jesus. I know that maybe we don't often think of Jesus as our friend. Maybe it's a little weird as a weird thought, right? Maybe. But I want you to know that Jesus is the ultimate friend. He, is, he cares deeply for you. He is there for you to lay your burdens on. He is always trustworthy. He's a safe haven for you. And if you're in a season right now where you feel like, man, I just feel alone. I don't know where you're at. I don't know if you feel, feel great right now and feel like you're loaded with friends or if you just feel alone. But if you feel alone tonight, man, I just want to make a, a, a special note to say, hey, one, we, we, want to, we want to plug you in. We want you to find connection here. We want you to be a part of small groups. We want you to find some gospel friends. But in the meantime, in the in-between, and you have Jesus. And so uh, I just want you to be encouraged. I want you to build gospel friendships. I'm going to just unabashedly ask you to, to, to join a small group. Even if you weren't here last week and you didn't join a small group, we'd love for you to stay and be a part of a small group. We believe that life is best lived in community. And so it's great to take in information. Man, that's great. But information has to move from your head to your heart. And we believe that happens in community. And so we would love for you to be a part of a small group. Um, and they're open, and so you can, you can kind of uh, find your spot. Um, but we would love for you to be a part of that. I just want you to remind you that, hey, we're glad that you're here. We want to be a community for you. And we're thankful uh, that we get to do this life together. Would you pray with me? God, thank you, thank you, thank you for <clears throat> gospel friends. We thank you that you created us to have the ability to have people that love us and care about us, who will tell us the truth about our life, who will call us out, who will call us up, who will point us to you. God, I pray that you would allow us to receive those things and actually be those, those same type of friends to, to the uh, people that we have in our life that need that. God, you are good to us, and we are thankful that you are our forever eternal friend who loves us, who cares for us, we are just blessed by your love and your presence. 
I pray for uh, small groups as we move to those, as you to allow them to be fruitful, that they would build friendship um, and grow in closeness with you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.